better be. I am live. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I like. Coolio. Well, welcome to another episode of Commercial Open Source Office Hours. Uh, I'm joined again by Omar. As Hello. always, great to have you. Thank you. And and Gabriel as well joining today. And I'm just typing oh. out a tweet. And off we go. Um, well, it's great, great to catch up again. Uh, Omar is working on an inbox. Uh, very exciting new updates, I guess, coming in. Um, and Gabriel, if you want to introduce yourself, feel free to go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I'm Gabriel from uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm working on Flyde, an open source visual programming language that integrates with VS Code and uh, also a visual API builder built on top of, of Flight, which you can think of as like Zapier for developers, but you can download the flow and run it yourself afterwards. You're not vendor locked in. Mm. Long, long That's journey, cool. open source later in stage. And yeah, I'm curious to learn from, from the masters. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Zapier and the whole no-code movement is, is always been interesting to watch because it's like one thing about programming is like you own your code <laughs> you run it on your own machine you run it on any server uh, i don't think programming language would be as popular if you would rely on a uptime server by someone and uh, so I'm, i've always been not skeptical because no code obviously you know is great for integrating into services and stuff but when i hear people build like their entire business on top of no code i always get kind of like the x because it's like yeah you, you reach a point very quickly where you need something more sophisticated so it's interesting uh how, how how's your company or how's your product solving that so i just have to comment on what you what you you said someone smart once told me that building on with no code is the high, highway to churn you know like you'll like if you're highway to churn. Uh, uh, that's great yeah so actually when i started i imagined it has like uh visual serverless kind of thing where you go into fly.app and get your own URL and your own APIs. But after talking to a bunch of CTOs and VPR and these, I, I eventually understood it has to be more of a programming language. Mm. And now fly solves that by being a VS code extension. It mm. writes its flows into the file system and integrates flawlessly with TypeScript. So you can take some of your services wrap them in, in, in a flight node and then use them visually in your visual flow and call that flow from your own code. Mm. So it kind of, the first step is really uh, uh, interesting and, and niche for, for the first use cases because you really have to know the value you're going to get, which is basically allowing other people to collaborate with seeing, seeing stuff visually. For example, I have uh, one user that's trying to use that to orchestrate, to use Flight to orchestrate a, a deployment script for a data center. I, I didn't even mm -hmm. quietly under, I understood what, what is, what's going on there, but anything you'd probably convey in a whiteboard and you can also convey in Flight. It's just a matter of how, how adventurous are you to be one of the first... <laughs> testers but i really like believe that with ai and so many newcomers gonna get into development there is mm. a place for a new level of abstraction you know like historically each new revolution if it was the personal computer or the mobile phone or the cloud each one kind of brought its own languages or frameworks sometimes and like i'm aiming on on a higher level future it's far-fetched, but uh, I'm backed by open source, so. Can't go wrong with that. I mean, <clears throat> one thing that excites me is, um, you know, there's a kind of, kind of like this quote, quote, like called low code movement. Um, but I think uh, if you can, <clears throat> if you have the same usability as Zapier with the benefit that you can also like somewhat interface with code and you run it yourself and you deploy it, I guess, on a server, um, it becomes more of a, yeah. Can you share the link? That's a great idea, Omar. Yeah, um, I love that. It's, it becomes more of a, um, like, <laughs> it sounds so funny, but like a visual builder, you know, remember all of these yeah. visual builders back in the days from, uh, what is it, Java and C-sharp? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, visual basic. 
for mm -hmm. the win. Digital basic. Yep, yep. So oh. uh, that's cool. All right, we're looking at Flight, a visual programming for developers. And it's, it's very cool. It seems to be you define your triggers and values and output. That's cool. So you can do all these things. And it's a flight file, like dot .flight, I imagine. Yeah, it's, it's just a YAML behind the scenes, but I... Mm. You call it flight because it's sprinkle funny. a little. Sprinkle yeah, a bit. it's like flight is also like flow. To flow, I guess, in Danish. I'm not sure if mm. there are like any Danish uh, viewers <laughs> now, but uh, I, I'm really afraid they'll discover it's like a really bad slang, you know? It's like, <laughs> but uh, uh -huh. I really love like what the Danish like aesthetics and functionality mm. is all about. And like, the, as you see, like you can see the data flowing. Yeah. And you kind of hover mm -hmm. on the outputs and inputs and you see the oh, data cool. that passes through them like you mm -hmm. yeah and the, so the... and so your target audience is engineers right like the, because the, the target audience for zapier is non-engineers yeah. um exactly. run me through how you know this will change like how do you what do you expect from an engineer to be like oh wow this is amazing or is it more like okay yeah this is nice like where do you see yourself in terms of like selling to developers what do you think? Wow. Makes this so situation? yeah, that, that's the million dollar question. Actually, that's why uh, that, uh, uh, that's one of the main reasons I, I came. Like I have I have some assumptions and some my my, mm -hmm. my thesis is as following. Um, as of now, the main value you will get from Flight as an open source because it's still very uh, early days. You know, you don't there's no Python support. The performance is still much worse than uh, native coding. The, the main value you mm. get from it is the fact that you will be able to self-host. Uh, if you see the small trig link on the header, like the last next to the online playground, there's a link to trig. That's like the first commercial uh, product. You'll be able to run whatever you create there yourself using Flight. And then the value you'll get is the fact that you, you build an API. It's completely it's completely hosted by Trig, but if you want to run it yourself, you just click on download, install the VS Code extension, and and mm. and that's it. So the, the immediate value is that. But my my goal is that bottom up with a with a community growing. Like the community of Flight is really almost non-existent at the moment. Like I got mm -hmm. like a really nice uh, Hacker News launch and like almost two thousand stars. But it's like mostly vibes, not not yet uh, turning into. It, it's mostly ex nice to see that people are excited about this, but they're probably churning in many possible ways. You know, there are not enough tutorials. The community is small. There are not enough uh, use cases. So yeah. I plan to launch Trig sometime in the in the future, like in the near future, and hope that that will start like a flywheel with the immediate case of you being like a technical person that want to use Zapier, but it's too non-technical. So you can use Trig and then be exposed to Flight. And eventually, uh, some larger uh, company might adopt Flight to... to why, why, build, to why, build two, why build two brands? What's the point of having two struggling brands and pro products? I mean, I don't really see yet how Flight is different to Trig, but like, what's the... What's the reasoning behind that? Yeah. That's a great question. To be honest, I, I still ponder if that was a good decision or not. I think like that my main um, inspiration for, for that move was like Vercel and, and Next.js. Like I want Flight to be like a, a, an open source visual programming language that's use case agnostic. Eventually, someone could build UIs with that, and I have in the playground. I have a, a React mm. counter example. I don't. I don't believe it's the right usage, right? But if you're a <clears throat> newbie starting to learn how to code, and you prefer to put your logic on, in Flight for the reducers of your front end or whatever, do it. Like you want to build a script to deploy your data center, do it. You want to build a game with Flight, do it. But what I believe, what Trig is, is wrapping Flight in a niche, in a smaller niche. Uh, in the, it's like the, the relationship between JavaScript and, and serverless and AWS Lambda. Like mm -hmm. Flight is the JavaScript and Trig is the AWS, the, the Lambdas. Um, 
I think that Flyde, I wanted also to, to separate the commercial layer from the open source layer. I think like from what I like doing, doing commercial open source uh, properly is, is a challenge. Uh, what I, from what I hear, that's like my main motivation of, of, of going, of entering this, uh, this session today, like to learn more about, more about it. Mm -hmm. but th that's my take to it. Like I want to separate the things. I want to make the clear, but like mm -hmm. Flyde is free do whatever you want. I'm going to monetize it in a really lean niche. Eventually I do plan on, on, on offering hosted flight services for enterprises that adopt flight for enterprise glue. Like, does that make any sense? So is who, which, which one is your main product? Is it trick or is it flight or are they kind of like equal? Cause like when I remember Vercel, uh, back when they were called Zeit, um, mm -hmm they had like the majority of resources spent into Next.js and making that work and making that grow. And most people didn't even know about Zite. The same way no one knows about the company Automatic, but everyone knows WordPress. Yeah. So like for you to find, I'd say you need to bet on one horse first and then you can still bet on the second horse, whether it's about branding or whether it's about product. But like, um, I don't, it's never a good idea to like look at someone who made it and then copy their state of 2024 when you should be copying what they did 2020 or 2019, right? Oh, and so um, I think for this to really take off, I think Flight, I guess, is the most technical product that you've built. Trick is, I guess, a wrapper around it. Um, and so I'd say, focus primarily, I, I know you're probably running out of money or you're fundraising, but like find a way to really double down on one thing. Cause like try to reduce as many distractions you have. At least that's what I would recommend most founders. Um, and like, like Vercel wouldn't exist if next year was, was bad, right? Like that's just, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just sure. reality and um, make sure flight is really good and people like it. And it's a, it's a good uh, product. But um, one thing I want to say is um, I think it's important to know why you're building certain things and why you're not building certain things. And to me, it's not quite clear today why an engineer should use a visual programming interface versus like writing code or asking ChatGPT to write my code. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of like in the messy middle where it's too technical for non-codes non non-coders non and it's it's it doesn't really hook me as an as a technical person where i'm like i want to change my entire way of building things and go all in here and i think um oh can we go all back to cameras please yeah that's a good idea i think um that's something you should try to figure out um and there's a chance you have a Venn diagram, but there's also a high chance that the niche is just very small. Um, and why I, I keep saying this, I said this last time, I think open source as a commercial business really works when you have a really big market, right? Because you will, as you said before, you will end up monetizing just a small percentage of it. Let's take 1%. But if your total addressable market, and, and I, I think I can even draw a figure here, if your total addressable market is just, um, you know, technical, non-technicals or non-technical technicals, uh, I think it might get tough to build a good business here, right? Like if you have two markets and you have, you know, the engineers and, and, and maybe non-eng, that's a fund. Um, like you want the middle already to be uh, like a really, really big business. Um, where do I remove the filling? Fill zero and stroke. All right, there we go. Just for the, for the gram. All right, stroke. Pull. So ideally, like if this is your market, right? If you're here, I don't think open source will make a, a business. Um, it's just too small. And the more you go in here, right? Like, let's say this is your market. You, mm -hmm. The the harder it will be to convince like these many engineers to only use flight, right? Because like 
they, they already have their tools and, and everything. And, but also the same is true for here when let's say this is Zepia and this is, this is code. Um, it, someone who's using Zapier, um, there's this, this crazy network effect where every website on earth gets with Zapier. Um, As, yeah, has an integration. Yeah, like, like Calocom has a Zapier integration. And so for me, you know, um, the benefit, the, the, the way to attack Zapier, I always say like the next Zapier does, or the, the, the next startup doesn't look like the previous one. So, so the next Zapier probably does not look like Zapier, right? That, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. But how do you build something? How do you, how do you attack this strong network effect where people on this side you know, want to give up their, their Zapier experience. Um, and the other issue is like, let's say you, you address people who, um, who this is by the way, my, my random stuff, where it's just a bunch of random things. Let's say people have never used Zapier, right? Never used Zapier. I don't know how big that, that thingy is, that that ring is, but I, they, they're probably, you need to be doing a really, really good job of like explaining why they should be using this. Cause like, if I'm a tech non-technical person, I look at this and I think of like spaceship, right? Um, <laughs> so, so you need to really figure out like where you want to be. Do you want to be in the no code space or do you want to be in the, I make engineering better? Cause like when you, be, when you're in the engineer, make engineering better, maybe your ideal market is actually screw Zapier and I'm going to do this, right? And you'll just be like better code because <laughs> mm -hmm. then you're still talking to engineers and you need a technical knowledge but you say like do the same thing but better and that's that's one way to break up one of these network effects and i mean we've seen something like copilot copilot is a mm -hmm. great um example of you know keep doing code but we do the rest kind of like you just, just tap yourself through things um and I think that's, to me, sounds a lot more um, like a viable path than try to convince people who are already locked into a certain workflow and like, you just it's just an uphill battle to compete on the Zapier side to, to an audience who already is not technical enough to ever probably understand it, right? Um, yeah. That's kind of like my, my immediate point of view and i have not, not enough context for the whole product to make more i, I think you nailed it i think <laughs> like you 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 you've think yeah you mentioned like most of like the 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 this the healthy criticism I, I get and i think like the the two main things that, that come to mind that the, the first one is that we only know about those who use zapier uh, but we don't know about all the engineers that wanted to use zapier and they started and they got like oh i don't want it because of git version control and i couldn't double click the slack integration so i can use the latest api and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and so forth and i think that might be uh, uh i don't know if it's it's not a huge market for like hmm. a vc fundable uh, uh startup I think it can. As zapier is a large market yeah yeah but it 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 appeals to to to, to the non developers which is which is like uh, logically much more than 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 the, the those who, who do code yeah. and the other thing is that i bet like my it's it's like a bet right it's like a a, a vision into the future that the, the, that we're going to see the, the this middle ground totally blur in in a couple of years from now and it might be starting it, it might be happening right now because you know, with with AI and like imagine a, a second year computer student, a computer science student, mm. like learning the syntax, and now it's just like using or she's using open AI and and, and 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 open source models to to hack their way into code, but th they will never fiddle with the mm. the low level algorithm stuff unless they care about it, right? Like there are people that will love doing low level stuff for ages, but the, I've seen, like, I've managed like the dozens of developers and, and raised a lot of juniors in my career. And like, I, I've noticed that once like we have technologies that are high level enough, you know, you have React and and and, and JavaScript, and TypeScript, and you can just get into coding without knowing how memory works. Like, and that's fine, you know, as long as you're passionate about the business and you want to build things that that appeal to users, you know. I, my my angle is that that intersection, which is really small, and I agree, 
mm. might have like 50,000 people right now, it will explode in the, in the, fi- in the next five years. Like, we'll, no, we'll I have get like you. this. Yeah, I get you. I mean, um, I think <laughs> I like that. The, the moment you, <clears throat> instead of going over for the overlap, I think the moment you address new engineers or, or existing engineers, A, that's a lot easier. And the second thing I want to make sure is um, when, when you're going, and, and I had this in, the, in, a, in another office hours, when you go against something and you mentioned Zapier twice already, mm-hmm. tell people that's what you're building. And it doesn't mean that you'll be doing this for the rest of your life. It means you pick a keyword that everyone knows, that every engineer knows, and you build upon it and you say, um, for engineers, I don't know, Zapier, <laughs> open source, OSS. Like this already, if, 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 I'm, if I meet you in the bar and you say, well, this is an open source Zapier for engineers, I'm like, I right, cool, I get it, right? That like, okay, I know what Zapier is, I know what open source is, and I know that it's for engineers, not for head of marketing people who connect Slack with Intercom, right? Um, mm-hmm. so, so that's, I think, the key difference. I, I like the point where you said like double click into functions, into things, because like mm-hmm. we already as engineers, we double click into definitions and stuff and to do, not be able to do that in, in no code is, I think, is a real problem because you also don't know what's going on under the hood. So that's what I would double down. Um, and I would probably, again, just focus on one brand and one landing page and one product for now. You can call it Fly Cloud or something. There's nothing wrong with that, um, mm-hmm. especially since mm-hmm. Next.js typically, Next.js is a very specific framework for React. Um, yeah. I, I, and sure, there is a point to say Flight is going to be the next programming language, uh, language in yeah parentheses but um for now you're still a tool like Mm -hmm. you're building a tool you're building an interface a figma ish like interface a fig jam kind of interface and that has to work really well and so i would just focus on one brand one good product one call it um flight and flight cloud or something uh it makes a lot of things easier to sell because like now i'm we're talking about two things now like one's trig and one's the (laughs) other one I'm already confused. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think those are my my two um, two recommendations. And now we should go back to flight. Um, see, it's 2024, right? Like this. <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but this sounds like it's a landing no, no. page from like the 90s. Yeah. So I'm not uh-huh. sure if you want to attract people from the 90s. Um, <laughs> there's probably a chance you, you might want to. <laughs> But like I remember having these types of things in like Turbo Pascal and in like my my high school where I had to like connect things with um what's it called uh, not Turbo Pascal but um ah man this other pro- the visual programming access uh, yeah yeah access and um that's from Microsoft the other one Eclipse no anyway doesn't matter but like what I'm saying is if you want to build a modern like a better product. Ideally, it probably needs to look better than something that we thought. Like every engineer probably has seen one of these in in the old ancient books, uh, right? And so you want to make sure, Uh, like, we bring it back, but better, right? Like this is the the best way to be programming um, moving forward, you know? Because you have great ideas. TypeScript, great. VS Code, great. Um, You know, JavaScript, maybe great, but... um, so I think you, you have get it for free ideas. once you support yeah. TypeScript, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, and I, I know this website runs on uh, DocuSaurus. I get, yeah, um, that's great for open source. You know, TRPC is, I guess, a great example of a similar looking website with uh, DocuSaurus. Uh, they actually removed DocuSaurus. Um, so yeah, I guess that works. Um, this is pretty dope. Maybe you can do something yeah. bigger, you know, when we go back to your page, it's, uh, this, this could be full screen. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean, this is it, showing people like engineers, what happens. I think that's great. And you build a lot of cool things. You know, you have a playground, you have, you have, uh, it always almost pains me to, to know that there's not like a 
lot of usage happening because like i know how much effort this is to build I, I was actually going to jump in and say that like i've been playing around with the demo in the background and mm -hmm. i'm actually really surprised and immediately about 20 or 30 use cases came to my mind mm -hmm. uh, and i was wow. like thank, thank god this is open source um, so <laughs> that's I, so fun to hear yeah like i, I previously led the uh, automations and integrations team mm -hmm. uh, at a big SaaS company and um me as an, as a developer now and as a product builder taking something like this and configuring it in a way that allows my users so integrating it deeply into my product and allows my users to then go through with a bit more control than would be traditionally available um you know i can try and create the best kind of interface with just like five buttons and stuff like that but these kind of flows and stuff where it can be and again like there's the raw data that was the tab that was missing for me um here mm. if you just click on the raw yep, data in the yep, upper right yep yep like everything is there like and so there's a lot of use cases for this um i think that going for the kind of semi technical or maybe non technical thing um but this would maybe be great for like well. engine the, so this would be great for um for game designers and mechanical um, or um what's it called uh, industrial engineers because like i think visual editors like first of like no game dev actually writes code anymore like it's all interfaces and drag and drops and buttons and arrows which makes a ton of sense because like no one wants to like hard code a shader for uh, a burning <laughs> fire so i think <laughs> i think that crowd could be interesting to try out kind of like because um think about uh think about there's two audiences there's an audience you want to sell to but there's also an audience that knows these things yeah. um how, how, how what's the best way to explain this so like you have an audience that you think engineers should do this in, in web devs should use a visual programming tool but then you might also think okay who's already using a visual tool who's who, who's who knows this stuff, who also wants to do web dev, but couldn't because they don't want to write fucking lines of JavaScript, right? <laughs> um, maybe that's a much better audience. Now you're talking mechanical engineers, you're talking game designers, you're talking everyone who's using a visual editor. And I, I, I'm not quite familiar with all the, what the names are of these tools. I think that's a great audience. And, and same, same as Omar said, you know, it's a, um, because then it's a much easier sell, and then you you just you have a, the initial community. They help you contribute, and they help you branch out into more industries. Um, so, yeah, that's that's super interesting. I just I want to comment out to what Omar said about like integrating it into a SaaS product. So actually, like funny story, like around one year and a half ago, when I was like fully into the pursuing the VC journey and no open source at all at this stage. Uh, my partner and my par partner in the days and I, we pursued that exact uh, spot. We tried, we started interviewing SaaS companies that wanted to allow their super users a next level of customization. But then speaking of uh, small uh, uh, markets, that we've, we completely de depleted our whole network just to get to two design partners. And it's like a ton of work and super specific for each one. So just like because you've mentioned that we i tried it and I, I believe sometime in the future it might go back and especially if if flight flight is open source and can be integrated but yeah and like uh, the, the idea of finding the, the the intersection between those who are used to that and want to 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 solve the problem i'm i'm aiming for is an interesting idea just have to figure out exactly mm -hmm. how does that intersection look like in a way that doesn't modify the the solution yeah. completely because these guys, they have their own tools already. Like there's Unreal Engine who does a great job at visual scripting. You have like all of the web. CAD. But not for web. Yeah, not for web. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That, like that's it's, a, it's a very small niche. Um, but I, I do think that with a little bit more kind of refinement on, on some of the messaging, it took me about five minutes to get what it actually was, like being, <laughs> being genuine. Um, no, it no, took no, me a few true. minutes to, to actually kind of understand what the what what it was doing and what problems it was kind of solving but yeah like mm -hmm. when i was in my early development days uh this would have possibly been something that i wanted i con once considered no code tools but i was like i've got no control it's it's locking yeah. like i am locked in and then i'm not going to yeah. be able to do what i want 
and so yeah, stuff like this is is essentially bridging that gap between the no code and the junior well, I would have junior code uh, well. <laughs> But yeah, like Joe, Joe Code. Joe Code. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's super cool. Joe Code is great. I'm going to embrace it. I'm <laughs> starting from parties with drunk people and uh, going upwards. Uh, see yeah. how that goes. Uh, Gabriel, um, I hope this, this was helpful. Take this with a grain of salt. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you have a lot more domain knowledge. Um, last thing I want to say, you know, when you, when you want to find product market fit, you have two variables. You have your product and you have the market. So maybe you have the right product in the wrong market or you have the, the wrong, you know, wrong product in the right market. Um, both things you can change, right? Um, and so maybe, maybe making a new landing page that says helping game devs build web applications, you know, that still uses the same product. It's just a whole mm -hmm. different tagline, a whole different audience. And you try that, you post it in a couple of gaming forums and you see people pick it up and understand it and, and like it. And then you try to iterate. Um, but do be aware, only do that if you're actually interested in that market. Because once mm -hmm. that actually works, now you'll be dealing with game devs. <laughs> I love game devs. Uh, right? I'm a so, future game dev myself <laughs> once I make enough money from, from real things. Nice. <laughs> but, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, thanks a lot, the... guys. Yeah, of course. Stay, stay with us. Uh, we're switching yeah, gears. Yeah. Welcome, Vlad, uh, from Use Nomad yeah. AI. I'm going to share my screen again. I think this is a great idea. Um, tell us about your business. H how's it going? Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, uh, so basically, we're uh, essentially uh, creating uh, like a wealth health tool for small business owners. So if you scroll down, you'll actually see more of the tool. But uh, oh, right. right now, we're not there yet. That's more of the UI, to be honest with you. So mm -hmm. if you click sign in. But the idea really is is uh, essentially uh, one of the biggest challenges for small business owners is uh, knowing. Uh, so I'm, I'm Boston based. I'm in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the bigger aspects is, especially as a small business owner, is you, it's hard to a like uh, uh, reach out for help, uh, and two, um, it's also hard to uh, uh, really get a grasp of your like valuation, um, how to even uh, like get an appraisal mm -hmm. done, for example, or even like what your small business score is. So it's called the SBSS. Uh, There's like a FICO score related with it as well. So um, essentially, uh, so if you go to sign in, yeah, so continue with emails. Right now it's just a demo. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially we're just kind of uh, showing like your, uh, we we don't have uh, like we're still actually working on the UI for a lot of it, mm -hmm. but the whole point is essentially we're bringing together uh, all your sales from all the different platforms. So right now we're yeah. we're targeting as uh, um, consumer product good companies, so people who are essentially selling uh, like a brand that sells mm -hmm. either um, like a good online. So. Uh, and we're just kind of pulling in your your sales right now for that and mm -hmm. then uh we're adding an ai component so with these like ai agents mm -hmm. so if you go to ai playground so you basically connect with your data here and then uh here you could actually like talk to an agent that uh, so we, we don't have this built out either this piece but uh, the whole point here is uh um uh, like you could talk to uh like we'll, we basically pull in that data into a, a, a vector database and we kind of do a rag on that but mm -hmm. that's kind of the idea is we just kind of allow you to talk to your quickbooks data your your financial data okay. and from that world yeah but that's that's it uh from that perspective why did you so call it, it still needs a lot nomad. Of work. like what's the what's the what's the spiel behind digital nomad because like to me that's mm -hmm. a, a name that i associate with many other things than banking uh, or not yeah. banking, but like yeah, yeah so there's actually uh there's there's another like um product i think it's just called nomad um uh, i think it's from brazil actually which is like a quickbooks step alternative um mm. yeah so the reason why i called it uh use nomad or digital nomads ai is um uh, my thinking was originally like where, where i'm trying to get to is just have a bunch of ai agents that small business owners can like tap into um and we ended up uh we had to like simple like simplify it down so uh, we're essentially you know targeting cpgs right now um, but that's kind of the, the idea is that we, we want to like create a bunch of agents for small business owners to use. Huh. 
I mean, I, yeah. I, the, the same thing crossed my mind. For me, a digital nomad is somebody who works remotely and travels around yes. the world. And <laughs> the crossover yeah. between somebody who yeah. works remotely and tra travels across the world and a small business over a small Zero business chance. owner for me yeah. is like a very, very small percentage. Like I live somewhere in a hotspot. There's half the people here are digital nomads. I watch them come and go every day. But 95% of them aren't business owners uh, in a sense. So that, that kind of naming confused me initially. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, the, the branding nomad is pretty cool though. Um, like, yeah, you could say that each of your AI, whatever LLMs are little nomads that walk into your business, do some stuff and then leave or something. You can play on words, uh, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'll let uh, Peer continue. Yeah, I, I'm i not sold and I, you might think I'm big on branding, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I like brands that, that say what they do and they do what they say. And um, to me, like this is a AI travel agent. That's it. That just helps me find my next Airbnb really um, from a name. Like if I see this on a billboard, if I can see this in your email, if I like just me looking at the calendar entry of people joining today, I was already expecting someone who's a nomad who like wants to sell me the best next Airbnb. Um, regardless of that, I think what you're onto is a great idea. Um, have you heard of midday? I think they're doing something somewhat similar. Um, happy to put you in touch or even midday. Uh, yeah, I've never actually yeah. heard of it, but I'll check it out. It's just it's called midday. Yeah. So this is, uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I've actually, yeah, I yeah. actually spoke with the founder. Yeah. 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 From, uh, student. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So I don't think it's, I don't think there's a huge overlap, but, but it's, at least some, maybe there's a way, you know, open source is great. Sometimes people just like join other projects, you know, as like founding engineer or, or co-founder even. I, mean, I know they are very early too. Um, but the idea to, you know, feed lots of data into a, you know, an LLM is probably yeah. the best idea you can have this year. Uh, and so if you find a good niche where, where this makes sense and, you know, your, your customers are, are into this, um, but, but Typically, you know, the hardest thing is not the product, it's building community, getting customers and making money. Um, and they involve, unfortunately, a lot more things like brand, like, you know, reputation and trust and GitHub. And if you want to stay open source. Um, so that's what I would, to be honest, really focus on. Um, so my advice is just get a better name. <laughs> I'm kidding, but that's not the only thing. But um, how do you go about building a, a yeah. good uh, community, I guess? Because I that's the thing, I, especially when it comes to like financial services type of mm -hmm. uh, world, right? Um, there's not, I mean, I guess um, like there's Bloomberg, obviously, but even that, mm -hmm. like uh, there's not a lot of like open source in the financial world, you know? Oh, no, there Just is it, plenty. I oh, mean, OpenBB, OpenBB has a massive community now, nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've heard of Open yeah I've, I've heard yeah Dieter. yeah uh getting in touch with didier see how he's connected maybe to other fintechs i mean every same as every other industry every industry is using open source so they know people and they try products and they they, they have i guess fintech meetups or so um you could start local where are you based right now uh so boston mass Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have MIT next to you. Like there's probably a couple of FinTech founders jumping out of MIT. Um, so it's good to build those connections. Uh, if you want to go top down, you talk to, you know, founders of companies and they bring on their people. If you want to go more grassroots, um, you can, you know, launch on product hunt, launch on hacker news, go in like four, four forums that talk about FinTech or banking. If you want to go the customer route, you may want to talk to, um, maybe some web agencies that consult small businesses about their finances. Um, you could go like the WordPress route where you, you sell your product to agencies and they sell it to, to the end customer. Like, um, you know, the way WordPress has grown, like the, a lot of buyers don't know that their website will actually be on WordPress because they talk to the agency and they say, Hey agency, I want a website. And then the agency makes that decision to use WordPress. So maybe if you're selling to lots of, you know, SMBs, maybe you're not selling to each SMB directly. Maybe you find somewhat of a, I, I'm not a fan of channel partners, like don't have a single person who does your sales, but 
but maybe there's a way for you to build a strategy where it's like, and that that's where open source comes in also quite nicely, where you say like the AI powered building blocks for SMB or something, and then it and you sell it to engineers, not to small businesses. Yeah, so I wanted to also ask this quickly. So our, our go to market is essentially uh, we have all these like integrations built out and that's kind of how I was going to drive traffic to the platform and site. Um, what do you think about that? Like in terms of because I know Cal also has something similar where you guys basically have like uh, integrations that uh, at what point did you guys like start really like pushing on that and like rolling that out? Integrations is a chicken and egg, right? Like no one wants to mm -hmm. integrate with you if you don't have users and no user mm -hmm. wants to use your product if you don't have integrations. So it's like, um, if if you don't if you do not have a user base, people don't want to integrate with you, right? Like, um, so I, I guess you need a good single player first, right? Like, Cal.com on its own works without any integration, and and it's a very good product, and that's why people use it, and that's why they come back, and that's and now we're seeing bigger partnerships where actually other companies are reaching out and say, hey, I, I need the Calicom API into my HR product or whatsoever. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a zero to one growth path. Like it doesn't help you today unless you are a really, really talented partnerships salesperson who, you know, can, I don't know who would be a good integrations partner, uh, maybe Mercury as a bank or I don't know, Zero, or I don't know if you want to compete with Zero. Maybe you want to build your own accounting. Um, maybe you just pivot, or maybe you just build a open source QuickBooks. I mean, that's a great pitch. I'd be down for that. So. Um, I just wanted to ask, actually, just to clarify a couple of things. Um, so there also seems to be a kind of buying and selling yeah. part of the business. Is that the core focus, i.e. An, an open source alternative to acquire.com, but you actually yeah. have the tools to monitor your valuation as things go along and kind of process things. Yeah, okay. and then exactly. Yeah, and then the the bit because uh, I, I, are you guys coming with like biz buy sell by any chance? With the who? What? Sorry, uh, biz buy sell. It's like a uh, acquire dot com uh, biz buy sell. It's it's all these like um, essentially like broker listing places. Ah, like actually. the flip flipper dot com as well and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, um, that's kind of the market I'm going after. Okay. Um, our like biggest competitor actually in the space is uh, something called uh, Batten Market. Something similar. You can basically uh, they just like work with like private equity uh, to you know help source a lot, a lot of these like traditional companies. Because like one of the right now we're focused on CPG, but like in general there's there's this like movement of companies who don't really like uh, like the small business owner. Like uh, they don't tend to either. Um, like, uh, how, how could I say this? Like, they don't have a lot of tooling or they, they might just have like QuickBooks or they, they just might not really be aware of like the exit process. And I'm trying to kind of fill that gap. Oh yeah, right now, nothing actually comes up, but yeah. I how, come you, open. Yeah, on. how come you're building so many products at the same time, but none of them work? I, I think uh, you're, you're right about that. It's So we're actually migrating over from our old domain over uh, and I'm not the best UI guy. So that's, that's kind of the issue. I mean, it goes back to the, the fir first uh, topic with Gabriel, um, yeah. like build one thing that works, right? Like, like why, is, why launch four products that don't work? Um, like you have a wealth platform, an AI valuation agent, a free valuation in the marketplace bias. And, like the marketplace on its own is a, is a, is a massive undertaking like we're, we're talking like marketplaces on its own are probably the the hardest businesses to 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 start because you depend on both sides like you're not building a tool you're building an ecosystem that requires buyers and sellers and you know that's that's a chicken egg on its own um and the other thing is like marketplaces take so many years to monetize because like you're probably dealing with a, a very tiny percentage of commission, uh, you probably need maybe a couple million in and in, in monthly GMV to to just pay your electricity bills, um, and so uh, I'd be cautious. Like I like the idea of building a SaaS tool where you can like put in your data and it's kind of like your AI assistant thingy, 
but um yeah really start start with the things that work and then expand from there um it's a it's a to me it's a classic sign of you know like kind of like what's it called a shiny object syndrome where it's like oh we can do this and we can do that and we can do this and we start building out all of these different things and and none of them are done or work or gain any traction um not saying these are not bad ideas not not saying these are bad ideas i'm just saying you know like it's it's probably a good idea to get one thing up and running and then iterate and launch the next thing yeah that makes sense appreciate that um i'll i'll add to that a little bit so there's there's a lot of potential here and you've got the potential to go into a few different spaces um a lot of people in smaller businesses is indie hackers for example they go through periods of getting like selling their companies and building out a tool that they can connect to their stripe that they can monitor over time check the valuation check the you know there's all these crazy tools what's the value of your twitter profile for example and things like that and integrate these to build out um essentially a tool that they can use to track what the valuation of all of their work and everything is at this current moment in time um and then that can be an, a simple entry point for whatever you want to do in the future at least then they have a central place if somebody's interested in acquiring they can log in show them all the details where all the numbers graphs calculations and stuff have come from starting with something smaller and lighter like that will allow you later on to expand into the the crazy stuff that you want to do whether you want to integrate with quickbooks or more integrate with, uh, with well, whatever and like the Stripe, I know Pierre, um, Pierre mm -hmm. is going to laugh at this. Getting the MRR value out of Stripe is not an easy thing, um, <laughs> but there's ways to do it. Like you, if you solve that problem, you have instantly bought on 500 customers who, who have desperately been trying to do that for months. Um, so yeah, like narrowing down like your focus a lot um, and kind of really picking out, it doesn't have to be, this is a mistake I used to make years ago. So this is my seventh startup. Um, a mistake I used to make years ago was thinking that my ideal customer profile and my ICP is the same ICP throughout the lifetime of the business. And now as I've gotten older and, and, and I'm not going to say wiser, but bolder, definitely. Um, I realized that the ICP changes basically in every single phase of your business, you will start up with one ICP and quickly start changing and iterating over it and growing until you become more and more enterprise focused, uh, as it would be. And yeah, just find your find the most basic, simple baby ICP that you can go for. Um, something that's easy. Go onto Twitter, post about it, ask people about it, um, and build up from there. Cool. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, our ICP has been changing 360 degrees for many years now, and it's um, it's true. Yeah, but as long as you stay court, like I I keep saying, like. If you find a really, really big problem, um, put that as your North Star, like in, in the sky, and like you want to find your way to it, and 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 that 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 should be at least a constant. And if that North Star doesn't sound enticing, you know, like I always say, like what if what if this actually works? Am I going to be happy building towards this thing? Like if you're not, then change that North Star and build something else and build in a different direction. Um, but but at least that's that's one thing that i would try to keep and then you know the product can change the the messaging can change the icp can change the the different yeah the interface can change but but i i'd say if you if you don't have a mission set yet like it's really tough like if you don't say i want to save small businesses 50 percent of accounting you 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 won't really know what to build because you don't know it's kind of like a headless chicken running around building something because AI is a fancy word right now. Um, I, I guess that's some that's something to prevent happening. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Cool. Uh, may I ask actually really fast, uh, what, what was the journey for you guys like to discover your ICP? Like your very first, uh, like, because I, yeah, I mean, I use the product, but I, I just, I mean, I, but there's probably, you know, a long time coming. So I, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was, that's a always a good thing to be your own ICP, right? Like I needed a better scheduling tool for my own company. Um, I was running a marketplace, so I have a lot of opinions on marketplaces and um, it could, it, I was using Calendly for the connection. So the TLDR is during our onboarding, we would ask people for their Calendly link. And then when they have a match on our marketplace, we would like forward that link to the buyer, sorry, to the contractor, to the company. And 
that creates a lot of issues because we don't control the infrastructure. We don't know if the booking happened. We don't know if it was canceled or res rescheduled. Um, and you want to be in charge of that data. Like as a marketplace, that's the most important thing. And so I, I just went on Google and looked for an open source Calendly alternative, really. <laughs> I couldn't find it. Uh, so it's a very, uh, very uh, boring origin, um, but it turned into something where I'm like, okay, well, there probably are more businesses that need scheduling for their marketplace. And you're probably a prime example for this too, if you want to connect buyers and sellers of businesses. Um, little uh, bit of advertising, but we do have a platform starter kit. So if you need like some pre-written code to start a marketplace. <laughs> that would be cool. I'll that, check it out. Send that over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but um so that's kind of like, you know, I was my own customer and that that's always the best because then you build something that you want, you, you don't only want to use, but you have to use. Um, and, you know, every API that the team uses themselves is always the best API because it's, it's really hard to build for people who, if you don't understand the pain. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. I think we're on time, 50 minutes. I have a call in. 15 and i need to prep a little bit um thank you all for joining i know this was a, a smaller round thank you omar for joining again uh we didn't really talk about uninbox today do you want to take the last 10 minutes and talk about uninbox um what's what's new for you oh crazy craziness um a lot has happened in the last week um in a way so we launched a few weeks ago um we had a lot of bugs we fixed a ton of bugs <laughs> But then we discovered that there's a lot of bugs that are either unfixable or they need uh, X amount of time to um, find a workaround for. And right. we decided to do the crazy thing of switching frameworks. Um, but it's it's going OK. Um, I can't wait to get back to building the actual <laughs> features and products. Um, so the reason why I mentioned the ICP was because it's on the top of my mind. Our ICP and our messaging is changing just now, even though we just launched a few weeks ago. Um, we got 2,000 something, 2,500 users um, since launch, but we're changing ICP, we're changing messaging because mm -hmm. the North Star, as Pierre said, like our North Star, and Pierre knows our North Star. Our North Star is like crazy 10 years time. Mm -hmm. This is like mm -hmm. our vision. And basically, right now, we need to take the next steps to get there. So we're just iterating right now, going over some uh, different messaging and getting feedback from people in the community, uh, key people, um, identifying as well who we need and who will help us grow at this next stage in terms of which customers. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, it's 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 been a little bit of a quiet thing. And uh I guess for yeah. me, there's the silence after the storm, right? Yeah. Storm and now it's a little bit of a. Now, now it's quiet, and I'm I'm concerned and maybe worried a little bit that, mm. um, if things get too quiet, like how how hard is it to go back out there and start beating the drum again? Um, and what what could you share or what could you advise for us to essentially try and keep some of the noise and hype and momentum going while we're not really shipping features we're just shipping bug fixes um in a sense well my friend you just discovered the startup curve from paul graham <laughs> yeah i know the curve too well it's very <sighs> open this one and it's just fantastic how it's always true for everyone there's no exception um this is something paul graham drew on the whiteboard and you you the, we should rename this to product crunch because no one's really on tech crunch anymore i mean come on tech crunch or in the hackers or in or the in the sorry hackers. or hacker news yeah. and, yeah. and 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 so a couple of weeks you were here you're probably now here and so this is where you die right yeah. this is where startups die and i wish there was a magic pill or a a book that i can give you but it's really just suffering Mm. Um, and ideally you would have raised your funding here, but not everyone has always the opportunity to do that. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, if it, if, when it comes to funding, you know, there's people who give you money because they like you and there's people who give you money because you have an amazing business. Uh, you probably want to focus on the later thing and build a fantastic business. Cause like good businesses attract funding. Yep. 
this is sad sad truth um you can also tap into your network and just try to get like surviving capital you know mm. that just lets you survive in here uh do not think that's going to be like great valuations it's not going to be massive amounts of money it's just you know really just to keep the boat afloat um and just really just test and iterate survive and get back to this one and and, and here you'll be unstoppable right yeah i just need to uh to survive survive some more and uh i think i think i'm i'm a bit excited to get back to building the product because then we have something to talk about instead of um we just fixed a bug that hid your emails once you reply to them um kind of stuff um or you sent a reply and it didn't go sorry guys uh, kind of thing but um yeah it's it's gonna be a very interesting uh, time coming up i'm hoping to reignite some of the hype soon um so everyone on the stream go check us out no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> but the two people actually the I, I did see your product like before like I, I think yesterday and now i just clicked that it, it clicked that that's your pin tweet which is ah it's me really yeah nice. like, yeah with the smp <laughs> And I think like you should be proud you're fixing bugs, you know, bugs means people are using your product and they're like trying to like, there, there's like, yeah. friction that you caused, which is great because the it's worse that the friction comes from the market. So, I mean, so, when, when there's bug reports, it means that people are actually using the, the thing and they're the more excited the bug reports or the more emotional the bug reports, the more it's actually impacting the users. Oh, I, I get, I get death, I get death threats nowadays. <laughs> Jeez, like, okay, I don't want to go that far. Let me take my phone number and address offline, guys. I live in Antarctica. If you want to come, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. But I, I do get hate mail where it's like, oh, my weird calendar disconnected and I missed a booking, and I'm like, stop oh. using fucking Outlook. And, uh, and there was an open source issue as well a while ago, isn't it? Uh, many issues yeah well, there was a developer on the cal repo who was basically screaming because of a bug um probably I, that's a normal yeah. day so. yeah that's a normal day which is you, you, uh, you, interesting. you want here's the thing you want this may sound weird and i'll probably get quoted on this but you want hate because hate means people are emotionally invested in your product and when they are you've got lovers what, as well and then you can and then you fix the bug and you got a lover and you got a five star rating yeah what you don't want is neglectance or just like this what is it lack of interest because they would not rate you bad they would not hate you but they would also not like you so like yeah. hate is good this may sound weird but a good advice for any founder like the moment you get hate you're probably doing something uh more meaningful than before so um appreciate I always appreciate the hate and yep i love it all right cool we're ending here thank you very much thank nice to meet you all thanks Take thanks. care. Take Have care. Rest of the day.